Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator. So today we're going to be looking at the Brigandine, which is a very uh, popular type of armour that was used particularly in the 15th and 16th centuries. has its roots in the 14th centuries, you could say it developed from a certain form of the coat of plates, but I'll save that for another video. Um, but essentially what is it? It's made up of lots of plates. We've looked at this before, this has been featured quite a few times on my channel. Um, and you can see that inside it is made of a large number of uh, hardened carbon steel plates. They might in some cases have been um, iron or low carbon steel, but in this case they're high carbon steel and hardened. So you know, it's the steel element of the armour itself is, is pretty damn effective. Um, and it's riveted on the inside of a, a jacket, essentially. Um, that we, that we put on. Now, there's a few interesting things to say about the Brigandine. Um, it's certainly more flexible than a sort of traditional cuirass made of a, a breast and back plate with a fold. Um, it's more flexible, it's more comfortable, it's easier to get on. Uh, you can put it on yourself. You'll notice that it does up at the front uh, rather than the sides or the back, so it's easier for a person to put on themselves. It's therefore more appropriate for all sorts of um, soldiers of the 15th and 16th centuries who might be putting on their own equipment and they don't have um, servants to help do that or squires or anything like that. Um, so they put on their own equipment and of course once they've got it on they can wear it more comfortably for longer um, and they're more able to do a multitude of different uh, jobs. Um, for example, archers would find this in general more comfortable to wear than um, something like a, a breastplate and backplate, for example. Not to say that you couldn't wear a breast and backplate and do various other soldier jobs, and some types of soldiers did wear breast and backplates, but just that these offer a certain degree of f flexibility and comfort. Um, and indeed we do see these being worn by knights as well uh, and in some cases, I say knights, men-at-arms um, and in some cases those men-at-arms would elect to wear a brigandine instead of a breast and back plate for various reasons. Does it mean that you're less protected? Yes, a little bit. Um, so I would say that generally speaking your protection against things like um, arrows and crossbow bolts is not going to be as um, strong with a brigandine as it would with a uh, solid breastplate and a placard. Um, equally if you're being hit by lances you wouldn't really want to joust in one of these I wouldn't say. Um, so the rigidity that you get from a breast and back plate uh, and from especially from the, the layered nature of the placard over the top of the lower um, part of the breastplate really does give an enormous amount of protection against really heavy hitting things like uh, longbow arrows or crossbow bolts or pole axes or lances from horseback and this kind of thing. Uh, but for fighting on foot and indeed for, for some fighting on horseback, um, skirmishing and such like, this type of armour is going to be really good enough. And remember, so very important thing, I'm just wearing a sweater today, that's partly because uh, some of my equipment isn't with me at the moment um, due to lockdown. But So I'm not wearing an arming doublet, normally I'd be wearing an arming, arming doublet of various kinds under this and I would have male sleeves, that is chain mail as it's commonly called, so male sleeves, a male skirt, sometimes a whole shirt in fact, but sometimes they could be separate pieces, um, and a male collar. Okay, so you have to imagine and I'm going to put this brigandine on in a second, you have to imagine that I've got male here, male at least for some of the arms, and uh, male down uh, covering my groin as well, and the upper thighs. Um, in addition, I could put plate defences on there as well, I could, obviously I'd have a helmet, um, but I could have full plate arms, plate legs, um, so on and so forth, and sometimes they did seem to add a placard, and that is the lower part of a cuirass, um, onto the to cover the lower part of this uh, brigandine. There's some debate about how those were constructed, but they appear in art quite a lot. Something that looks like the upper part of a brigandine and the lower part of a breastplate. Anyway, um, let's get this on. Now, I also want to talk about the shape of this and what I regret when I ordered this. Now this Brigandine is from a very skilled uh, maker of armour, makes a lot of HMB armour but also historical stuff as well, um, called Alexei Perebinos. So I put a link below to his Facebook um, and where you can look at the stuff that he makes and possibly order uh, armour of your own. Now I have a huge regret uh, when I ordered this. Now I am happy with this, it's very good armour. 
But armors, armorers, especially when you're um, trading around the world, are reliant on your measurements. And I very, very much uh, regret not making my waist measurement smaller. Now, this is something which is commonly overlooked when people are ordering medieval clothes or medieval uh, armor um, of any type. Um, and that is that the undergarments of, uh, of this period, particularly of the 15th, um, well, 14th, 15th and 16th centuries, really shape the body a lot. And the way that the doublet is fitted to you, the way that the arming doublet um, shapes you, actually makes you very thin-waisted. Whatever your shape is, it brings you in and it gives you a certain body shape that we see in medieval art. Now, one thing that people describe this off, often as is pigeon-breasted or, or kind of having this rounded shape. And some people, obviously, breastplates have this rounded shape for functional purposes, but also fashion purposes. Um, and we see this also with brigandines like this. And a lot of the um, replica brigandines, you'll see that this does actually have a relatively domed front to it. So it's got some of that. But a lot of replica brigandines are very, very flat on the front. And this is not really historically correct. It doesn't seem to tally with what we see in the surviving originals or what we see in the period art. So really, the brigandine should have some degree of doming to the front. But the, one of the things that makes this possible is having it really coming in at the waist. Now, what I didn't do with this is I decided to give myself a bit of a bit of space around the middle, and I wish I hadn't done. I wish I'd almost like a corset, which is what you should do with um, with an arming doublet or a doublet of any kind. You should really have it as tight around this middle bit that your natural waist, not the waist where you wear your trousers, as people often that's actually really your hips, but where your body articulates in the middle. You want to be as small as possible for numerous reasons, partly because it gives this shape that they found desirable in this period but also because it actually helps with the movement of armor as well uh, particularly when we get into breastplate you know when we get into full cuirass breast and back plate with a um, placard and a fold the the smaller you can get it here relative to your body the better the articulation and movement is going to be and it will look more like the originals as well which is an added bonus so if I put this, put this armor on uh, you'll notice that it's not difficult for me to put on. Remember, normally I would have an arm, arming doublet and then either a male shirt underneath or separate uh, male elements, uh, in other words, male sleeves and a male skirt and a male collar, known as a standard. So, uh, but if I'm just putting the brigandine on, you'll notice it's pretty damn easy to get on. It's, you put it on exactly like a coat or a jacket. And then it has a series of um, buckles up the front. Step back so you can see. Um, remember that this comes down to kind of the top of my trousers, but I'd have a male skirt coming down below that, okay? So if we just do this up as quickly as I can on screen. Now I do have various holes in the middle here, so I can make it as small as possible, which is what I want to do, to bring it into my waist. And then you can actually afford yourself a little bit more space. Just move a bit closer to the camera so you can see. Now notice the plates have to overlap uh, the right direction. So I'm actually doing this up as tight on the smallest holes possible at the moment because bear in mind I'm not wearing any mail underneath so I've got a little bit more uh, space. I might have to let certain elements, particularly around the armholes, out a bit if I've got male sleeves on because the mail obviously adds a certain amount to your dimensions. Can't see the hole for that one. Anyway, there we go. So you get the general idea and we do have this shape. We've got this um, slightly domed breast here and uh, uh, just to reiterate, Alex Alexei Perebinos does excellent work. Um, his, he can do it as historical as you want him to. So. There are certain things which were done on historical versions of these uh, which would be extra. For example, tinning the plates. So the carbon steel plates are obviously prone to rust, especially because they're close to your sweaty body. 
um, and some originals were tinned. The, pl the plates were tinned to stop them from rusting, which is essentially plating them. It's the equivalent of uh, stainless steel, essentially. Now, what do I regret? Well, I regret not having this waist brought in smaller because obviously my chest is my chest size. Okay, I can't really change. I can't constrict my chest because I need to breathe and I need to move. I need to be able to have uh, movement of the arms, but I, I also need to be able to um, breathe heavily if I'm getting out of breath, all that kind of stuff. Okay, but the waist absolutely can come in. And uh, what I did is I just brought a uh, piece of rope, hemp rope I've got here, as a demonstration of the fact that if I, uh, let's just do it straight like that. If I do that and pull, ah, I can actually pull that quite a lot more in here. And it actually achieves two things. Number one, obviously it achieves, by bringing this in here, it achieves more of the shape of the originals and it accentuates this shape of the breast, which looks more like what we see in the artwork and the, uh, you know, uh, effigies and statues and everything like that. Um, we'll bring that in here. Um, I might loop this over this time. There we go. Pull it in tight. So what I might start doing is putting a really tight belt around the middle there. But you'll notice, because I gave my measurements of my waist a bit bigger than were necessary, um, it means that um, I've got more space around the middle in terms of the plates, not just the materials. You might be thinking, well, Matt, why didn't you just get it altered? It's not actually that easy, because you've got to remember, all around here are a series of plates which are placed relative to each other. So it's not like um, you know, a suit where you can just go to the seams and bring the seams in a bit and lose a bit of, you know, you lose a few centimetres at the seams because at the seams here we've got steel plates going all around. So if you imagine Lego, for example, if you've got uh, 20 Lego blocks in a row, you can't bring those 20 Lego blocks in closer to each other because a Lego block is a Lego block. And I have that number of plates going around my waist. So whilst I can pull it in a little bit with the uh, rope here, let's loop that over again. Whilst I can pull that in a little bit, ah, let's do it as tight as, there we go. Let's actually try and tie a knot in that. There we go, I can, I can probably even get it tight in that, but anyway. But, I, but, but whilst I can bring it in a certain amount, I'm constricted by the plates around here. I can feel I've still got a fair amount of space. My body could still have it taken in even more. But aside from the fact of looking more like the originals and getting more of this chest and in at the waist, um, there is another very, very important reason why you want your armour to come in tight at the waist. And this goes for brigandines, it goes for male shirts, and it goes for a cuirass as well. And that is because now I've taken the weight off my shoulders. There's nothing, there's nothing really sitting, you can see, it's loose over my shoulders now. Now that means when I'm fighting, I've now got no constriction on the top of my shoulders at all because I've completely taken it on my waist. So, when you're doing your measurements, whether it's for your civilian clothes, whether it's for your arming doublet, so your soft git that goes underneath armour, whether it's for a male shirt, and male shirts are often bought off the peg in a standard size and they're often too big for people and this kind of stuff, you can take it in yourself, you can tailor it yourself by taking away a strip of rings and then relinking them, so just like you would do with fabric in a way, uh, or whether it's a brigandine or a cuirass or anything, I would recommend making your waist measurement as small as possible and part of that starts at the beginning. You mustn't have a, an arming doublet that's too big for you because if the arming doublet's too big then the armour over the top will be trying to squeeze against the and kind of concertina and bunch up the arming doublet underneath. So you want the arming doublet to be tight to your body so that the armour over the top can also be well fitted to your body without that extra kind of material getting in the way. So there we go, there's my big regret. I regret that I hadn't, uh, I didn't make a smaller measurement on my waist here, um, but I can mitigate that somewhat in this case because there is a flexibility, a certain amount of flexibility to a brigandine. Uh, I can mitigate that slightly by having something around here, you know, a belt and bring it in. And maybe with some alterations, I can probably also put another hole 
and put some extra holes in these straps and have it coming in a little bit tighter around my waist here. But if you're ordering plate harness, um, so a cuirass, breast and back plate, it's really, really important that you get this waist measurement um, correct. I mean, it's, it's input with plate harness, you're operating with very fine parameters, so you have to really get everything right, but it's very, very important for the waist. It's actually very important for all the measurements of plate harness, and usually when you, if you're physically able to go to your armourer, you'll often find there are alterations. You need to have some back and forth, sometimes over a period of time, to get everything working just right. But if, if you're ordering a brigandine, um, or any kind of soft clothes, or even a male shirt, try and get your waist as small as possible. Um, I hope this has been interesting and useful. Um, give us a like and a subscribe, share the video, and I will see you again soon. Cheers, folks. Just as a final uh, appendix to this video, I'd say absolutely you can wear um, plate harness as well uh, with a brigandine, and it was done. Um, as I say, sometimes we see in the artwork a placard um, sort of worn around the lower part of the brigandine, sometimes with a plate fold as well. Not necessarily if you've got a long brigandine, but absolutely you can put a uh, plate harness with, um, with uh, a brigandine. You just need to have, so in this case, my pauldrons, they are pointed uh, through those holes, so I would need to add pointing up to the top of this brigandine, which to be honest I will probably do actually, because it's quite a nice uh, flexible combo if you don't want to wear a breast and back plate. It's a bit lighter, a bit more comfortable if you want to just wear your uh, plate arms, plate legs, um, and obviously your helmet and bever with the uh, brigandine setup. So it does absolutely work as well. Anyway, cheers for watching folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.